in the situation that, that you know that the division's in right now? Um, I believe a finish over Gray gets me right back up to possibly number one contender. Um, keeps us up there at top two or three. And just, that's just because, I mean, obviously with the loss that you had in November, but it's to, you know, the champion. champion. Yeah. And, and, you know, great loss to champ for the last two years. You know, and, you know, beat him once, had to draw him once, and then lost to him. So it's uh, we're kind of good luck for the top. How have you felt the last six months or so? I mean, great. Uh, this camp's been good? Yeah, I've been making a lot of adjustments in my wrestling, just a different skill set, and uh, just focus on fundamentals. It's kind of... Ben Henderson stopped, uh, you know, he stopped the scrambles, slowed down the clinch, you know, to his pace a little bit, and it's, you know, it's kind of the telltale of that fight. So, mm -hmm. how much is uh, how much is the five round fight play into your favor, Clay? That's awesome, man. This is what the fans are looking for. This is what I've been hoping for for a long time. I'm just thankful that the UFC granted us a five round main event after the turn off uh, to both of us coming on losses. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely not going to disappoint. We're going to make the most of the opportunity, and uh, the fans and Dana White and Joe, Joe Silva will be wanting more. I know you mentioned when I talked to you before, you said you guys requested this fight and actually asked for a main event like this. Can you walk us through what was the process? Because I know this fight was rumored for a long time to happen, but when it finally got made, how much like play did you guys have in asking for this to be the main event to get a five-round fight? We asked them, you know, a few months ago. We weren't sure. It was kind of a shot in the dark, being that UFC doesn't really get the um, main events to guys that just came off losses. So it was kind of just uh, we kept our fingers crossed, hoped for the best, hoped that uh, the win streak around before that and the loss to the eventual champion would kind of perk their interest. And uh, the fact that, as of late, Gray has had experience in five-round fights. You know what I mean? He's had some success. And, um, yeah, they, they called us. We happened to be at the NCAA uh, D1 wrestling tournament. Uh, I'm in St. Louis, and uh, who did I bump into later that night? I saw Gray Maynard, you know, and the town blew up 100,000 people and bumped into him by complete accident. We kind of just laughed, you know, gave each other a hug, and uh, we were expecting a great fight from there. And yeah, you think the fact that, you know, this division is so, there's so many excellent guys, but you're going to have some guys coming up losses here and then. You think that played into the fact that they're willing to give you guys, like you said, the main event, even though you're coming up losses? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the top of the division is gridlock, and it says a lot about the depth of the lightweight division. You know, even the best guys in the world are going to come off uh, losses, but uh, to me, you know, that, you know, that, that loss, you know, made me more determined and motivated me, you know, beyond belief because I lost to the eventual camp, and it just shows to me, to myself, how close I am to the top, and uh, nothing's going to get in my way. Taking on a fellow wrestler like Gray, you think it's going to be more of a stand-up battle, and how do you feel about uh, where you lie in that? Um, you know, each time Gray steps in there, you know, you see uh, first, you know, he was taking guys down and ground pounding them and, and finishing them and, you know, getting some decision. And as of late, he's had a couple of fight of the nights and just, uh, you know, knocking him down, dragging him out fights, dropping uh, several of his last opponents uh, several times in each round. So he's got a lot of confidence, a lot of power in his hands. And, you know, I'm not going to make the same mistake to stand in front of him. Uh, anything's possible. You know, I expect him to come out and try to take me down and, you know, ground upon me, and I expect him to try to take my head off. But uh, we're not going to be there for him. We're going to be bouncing, to stand on the outside and uh, implementing our game plan. Does that change his style play to your favor, the fact that he has gone a little bit away from that wrestling style he had early in his career to where lately he's gone more to a boxing style in his fights? I mean, if he, if he plays that game with you, does that play more into your favor? Five rounds is huge for us, and the fact that we get to span it out, you know, over 25 minutes, and uh, to see him sit there and throw power punches for 25 minutes is fine with us. You know, we're going to be ducking and moving, and just we're not going to be there. We're going to be unpredictable and uh, stay, stay on our horse, and, you know, we're going to attack from the get-go. So what kind of style do you prefer fight-wise? Would you rather not, obviously not rather stand? Yeah, I'd rather not use my face um, as a dummy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd like to, you know, just kind of be in and out and, um, and not be there for the big punches, get the fight to the ground. But um, everyone knows we've seen our fight. We're not a stranger to standing and, um, you know, striking. Um, every time I landed a punch against uh, Ben Anderson, you know, I dropped him in the second, I think. Every time I hit him, his eyes got, you know, they got as big as golf balls. So we, we have definitely developed some power, you know, under, uh, you know, uh, Mike Winkeljohn and Brandon Gibson in, in Albuquerque. So I've gotten more confidence in my hands and uh, anything's possible. But uh, wrestling is my pedigree and wrestling wins championships. Have you been in Atlantic City before? Have I ever been what? In Atlantic City before. Uh, my brother fought out here six or seven years ago and won by knockout. So we're going to try to keep the tradition going. Man. I love to come out here with a big TKO or my first knockout in the UFC. How much have you looked back on the Benson Henderson loss, and uh, how much has that motivated you going forward? It's motivating, uh, motivated me beyond belief. You know, I'm more driven now in the sport than I was almost six years ago um, when I started in the UFC in October of 06, just because it shows how close I am to my dream. That's uh, you know having that belt and uh, you know, 
just getting one step closer, man. It's uh, a minor setback, but a big win over Gray is going to uh, erase, hopefully, you know, the, the memory of uh, the loss to uh, the eventual champion. Ben Anderson. I'm more driven now and hungrier and, and more passionate about the sport than I ever have been. Is there, is there more of a statement to be made in a fight like this? You beat a guy like Gray, who was the number two guy for a long time. You have wins over both Anthony Pettis and Nate Diaz, who are supposed to be maybe number one and two now. I mean, is there more of a statement in this division because of where they sit and the fact you've already beaten those guys? I think it says a lot about a character. Um such as life, you know, you, you, can, you know, see how you bounce back off of, off of defeats or, you know, a shortcoming in life, you know what I mean? I think tra you know, champions are tested on what they do after a loss, so uh, this, this, this is a, a testing to myself, this is more of a challenge to myself, you know, that, you know, that fight, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to put in the word, this is more a test to myself and I'm excited about the challenge to take on the most decorated wrestler I've ever faced, a three-time division All-American, Big Ten, you know, outstanding wrestler, um, so... Uh, I'm, I'm very excited about the the opportunity that lies in front of me. Yeah, you know, Clay, you touched on a little bit on some of the things that you know Henderson did well against you. What did you take away, I guess, most from that? What did you learn most from that loss? Yeah, you know, as you try to move forward to this one. Just fundamentals in wrestling, man. Finish those takedowns. Simple enough. I'm a little late to the party. Did you yeah, talk really about nice being here in uh, AC, and, and yeah, have you been here before? Obviously not to this building. Right? Um, no, I have not been here. It's only been open a few months. My brother fought either at the Trump or the Taj Mahal. I think it was at the MFC about six or seven years ago, and uh, he won by knockout. So uh, we look, we're going to look to extend the, you know, the, the welcoming party to uh, Gary Maynard. And, and, you know, go out there. And we're not much for predictions. I'm not going to start today or Friday about saying how I'm going to win, but I'm going to be raised. And, uh, I'd love to you know, do my first knockout of TKO, you know, victory in the UFC. And obviously at one point in time, it was like Vegas and the AC were the two fight capitals of the world, if you will. Uh, now this, what you're doing is everywhere. But to be able to be on the East Coast in between New York and, you know, Baltimore and Philly and all that, to draw all those people down. It's an honor. The, the fact that, uh, like you said earlier, the fact that they thought of Gray and Maynard and I both coming off losses to the two top guys in the world um, for the headline a main event at the uh, Rebel Casino, you know, a new resort here in uh, Atlantic City on the boardwalk. Uh, it's an honor. Yeah. Really thank you for the opportunity and I'm going to make the most of it. The fans are going to be cheering for more and uh, five days on us to ten rounds here. This is on free TV, obviously. It's on FX. It's a main event, five rounds. A lot of people say this fight is kind of flying under the radar a little bit. I mean, your sandwich in between the big pay per view yeah, last yeah. month, a big one next month, and then one the very next day. Kind of sell the fights for us. I mean, we know why this is a big fight, but, you know, what are people missing out on if they're overlooking this fight? They're missing out on five rounds of fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, they haven't gotten to see me fight five rounds. Um, Strike Force was still kind of up and coming when I fought. Uh, I lost my lightweight title to uh, Gilbert Melendez, and I fought Josh Thompson for it in 06 or whatever it was. So, uh, Anyone wants to see an exciting fight, tune into uh, tune into FX on you know, Friday night because it's going to be knocking down, drag them out. Anytime Gray Rod step into the cage, you know there's you know possibility of a uh, fight of the night, fight of the year. But I'm not even worried about that. I'm just going out there and uh, thinking about having fun and uh, getting my hand raised. You had anything fun coming up, walk out shirt wise? I know you like the metal theme. We've oh, seen Slayer, we've seen Maiden. See the, the hair and the, and the shirt are going to be pretty awesome Friday yeah. night. Sweet. Not, uh, yeah. I'm, not big on letting the, the cat out of the bag too early, but you guys will see a big surprise come Friday. And one last one on that. Have you ever been asked to tie it back before and do anything different with it? Uh, I think you have no, I've too. trained with it in practice. Believe, uh -huh. you know, I train with it sometimes up in a ponytail, and my teammates, people ask me, why do you train with it up? And then, you know, let it down. And tell them, like Kid Rock says, man, long hair swing and middle finger in the air, man, it's time to go. <laughs> yeah, that's why you just complied. You didn't want to deal with a headache and a hearing. You're just like whatever. And a headache, man. You know what I mean? It just shows me that uh, their camp's mind is elsewhere, and I'm focused on the task at hand, and that's that's victory. So have you ever been asked to do it before? Um, not not in a fight. No. Really? Yep. And that's like a hair trigger kind of thing too. Like the way you fight. You end up pushing your hair back, and like, is it going to be weird come, you know, <laughs> Friday with it's not there? To Friday will tell, man. You know, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not really even thinking about it more. You know, I'm not putting more into it than uh, than, than there should be. It's, uh, it's only hair to man. We go out there. It's all about heart, and uh, who's more determined uh, to get their hand raised. And, uh, I'm, I'm so driven in this fight. We train so hard for it. And, uh, Victory will be mine. And have you done anything differently in this camp than you've done in prior camps? Have you brought any in different? What have you done differently? Oh, bigger, stronger, divisional wrestlers, guys that can mimic uh, Gray Maynard. Uh, we've you know, done a little more you know, cardio in there, so uh, I expect to see an even stronger uh, you know, like we did.
Had the fight already been signed when you guys ran into each other at the tournament? Not signed, but uh, a couple hours earlier, we got the calls from our managers in the UFC, like probably four or five hours earlier that day when we heard about it in St. Louis. So it was, it was cool, yeah. man. We, we shook hands, we hugged, and it was, we just kind of laughed, you know, because, oh, yeah, yeah we, I hadn't been in St. Louis in years. He hadn't been there since he wrestled there, so, and we just bumped into each other in, you know, a town of two million people oh, wow. by a complete accident. Let's get a couple of poses here if you could. Are you guys friends? <laughs> That's what we want. <laughs>